Hey guys, and welcome on into the next NHL season preview show. Uh, and today we're going to be talking all about the Vancouver Canucks, uh, looking at their additions and subtractions, upcoming free agents, uh, possible lineup for opening night, team future bets, and player future bets. Uh, and to talk the Canucks, uh, I brought in Jimmy the Bag, who came on last year's show. Uh, Jimmy was awesome having you on last year. Uh, happy to have you again on this year. For people that uh, have never um, heard of you before, uh, maybe give yourself a brief introduction. Ooh, I have been with the bag show uh, Tuesday through Friday. With the NFL season, it's a little different. But born and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, left at um, after graduating high school to York University in uh, North York, just north of Toronto. And I was an you know, actor and a comedian for 18 years. Uh, in 2017, I took a job down in Costa Rica to start capping sports full time. And I've been doing that. So I'm seven years as a full time capper. Uh, hockey is my first love, uh, my bread and butter, uh, my favorite sport. And I love what I do uh, very, very much. So I love the opportunity to talk hockey. And I think, you know, if I was to be able to take this to a higher level unit size wise, I probably, you know, if we could get up to two, three thousand, five thousand dollars a unit, I would probably only bet hockey. It's my best sport. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. Hockey. Now, last year was a down year, but a lot of people I found kind of had a down year last year. So um, I'm not looking in too much to last year. I'm just trying to get focused on this year. I finished, a, a year, up, year. I finished the year up 17 units, uh, which, you know, I will take. But it, it was such a grind that it, it felt like a losing season. It felt like I was clawing all year long to, to be in the black, to stay in the black. I had a, a monster run in the last month of the season. That's a that's the easiest time to gamble on hockey is when you know certain teams are fighting as hard as possible to get into the playoffs and other teams have given up. The motivation factors. So I did just a monster last month of the regular season. And, and I was just decent in the playoffs. But overall, uh, 17 units up, which... I guess I'll take, even though it didn't feel like a successful season. Yeah. Hopefully this year, it, it just it feels better too. And hopefully it's a better year for everybody uh, that bets on hockey. We're going to jump right into it here. We're going to start with the yeah. first segment, uh, which is uh, additions and subtractions here. Uh, and the Canucks did, they made some moves here in this off season. Um, however, a lot of these guys uh, are depth guys. Uh, that they brought in and, and that they uh, let go. Um, Casey DeSmith um, was basically the backup uh, for the most part for the Canucks last year. Um, he's an easily replaceable goaltender. Um, you can find a lot of other guys with his skill level uh, on the free agent market. So the Canucks let him go. Nikita Zadorov and Ian Cole on defense. Uh, and then I guess the biggest loss here would be Elias Lindholm, uh, who I don't know if he ever really fit in that well with the Canucks. Uh, and um, he uh, found his way on to another team. And then looking at additions, uh, a lot of depth guys uh, brought in here. Uh, Jake DeBrusque is the big addition, and he's really a guy that needed a change of scenery. Uh, it's been public knowledge for a while that he wanted out of Boston. Uh, and he, he stayed there, he stayed there, he stayed there. But now, uh, coming over to Vancouver, I really like that addition. I really feel like he's a player that is going to really succeed in uh, a new environment. Uh, and that's what he's getting here with the Canucks. Daniel Sprong may be a fourth-line guy, but he's a goal scorer. Uh, he seems to find himself on the fourth line of every team he plays for. Uh, but he scores goals a great player to bet uh, anytime goal prop when he is hot because you're going to get it at plus 300 plus 400 you're going to get really great prices with sprong so he is a guy that i'll be keeping my eye on uh, kevin lankinen coming in here yuri patera uh, yuri patera has potential uh obviously played with vegas uh for a few years here uh, he's got potential in that but most likely he's going to be in the ahl 
uh, for the Canucks. And then Derek Forbort, uh, another addition on defense. So some additions, some subtractions. I don't really think the Canucks got worse, but I don't really think they really improved either when you look at the additions and subtractions. I think it's pretty even split here. Jimmy, additions and subtractions, uh, what do you think here uh, of the Canucks offseason? Well, l- let me start by, you know, I'm, I'm 44, turned 45 in about five days. And I've been through it all with the Canucks, everything. Been through every single thing. You know, 1982 pictures of me watching the Islanders sweep us. Igor Larionov was my favorite player when him and Krutov came over. You know, after we drafted Trevor Linden, then we, you know, Pavel Bure, we had that that run in the in the you know early nineties. Uh went through a dark period there, you know, with Messier and Sandin, and it was a, a rough patch there. And then, you know, the Sedin era, the Sedins, you know, getting to the Stanley Cup final once again in, in 2011. Uh, now we got there again in, in 94 uh, and then losing to the Rangers in seven then losing in seven to the Bruins in 2011 through it all. I can say unequivocally that this is the best state that the franchise has ever been in, uh, without a doubt in my mind with our additions and subtract subtractions, Rutherford and Alvin have done a great job. When you look at the subtraction list, the only name there that, you know, I mean, Ian Cole would have been fine, you know, if we kept him. But the, the name was, is Big Z, Nikita Zidorov, you know, 6'5", 250, tough, outspoken. You know, he, he was perfect and beloved in his short stay with the Canucks. But if you look at, you know, DeHarnay and Forbort, if you look at our bottom four defensemen, now they're not as big as Zidorov. But wow, uh, Tyler Myers, a 6'8", 230. Uh, Carson Soucy is what, 6'5", uh, 210. Forbort, 6'4", 220. And then Vincent DeHarnay, 6'7", 230 pounds. That's my dream. Uh, Rutherford is building a real team that's tough to play against. And with Rick Tockett at the helm, you know, who demands accountability, this franchise looks great. Now, should we have given Zadorov that one extra year of term? The jury is going to be out on that one. But I love Forbort. I love DeHarnay. You look at the top, Kiefer Sherwood. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood had 245 hits last year. That would, If he was in a Canucks uniform, that would place him second behind Dakota Joshua, who had 254. Uh, DeBrusque is going to work nice, we think, with Pedersen. And Pedersen needs it. You know, we'll talk more about, you know, the the Millers and the Pedersons, I know, in the segment down the road. And, and this is just for our additions and subtractions. Daniel Sprong, Danton Heinen, these guys have history with Talkit and with Rutherford. And if Talkit wants them in the room, then, you know, we trust them. Jack Adams award winner. So I love our offseason. I think we're in absolutely great shape. In fact, the only thing I don't like about the last six months is Pedersen's contract, eight years and $11.6 million, which goes until he's 33. Uh, You know, he had one goal and five assists in 13 playoff games. He had 20 points over the last 33 games uh, combining the regular season and the playoffs. I fear that, and we can talk more about that when we get to our star players and and the player props of that market. But I love the offseason. I love what Rutherford and Alvin are doing. I love the direction of our franchise. Yes, we would like to have Zadorov, but we have a lot of elements that great teams have. And the first thing is be tough to play against. And we have that front pair defense that's spectacular. And, you know, Norris Trophy winner, Quinn Hughes and Philip Ronick. And then we have these giants back there. Now, they're not as big as Big Z, but I love the makeup. I love the additions. I love the squad. I think we're shaped to be a very good hockey team for a long time. And our division is weak. The West is tough, but our division is is pretty weak. And we'll be on fighting for the top of it 
uh, for years to come. It was a great off season. Awesome. Yeah. The, uh, we've already gone through all the teams except Vancouver, obviously and Anaheim. Uh, and the division really has a lot of questions. Uh, obviously Edmonton minus one Oh five to win the division. Uh, they are like the only team that's not plus money to win the division. Uh, and we'll obviously get to that later, but, the Canucks won the division last year, and I get it. Edmonton's got all that uh, star power, but um, Canucks are around plus 400 to win the division. So there's a ton of value there if you look at it uh, that way. But we'll get there uh, later on in the show. Upcoming free agents. Jimmy, we'll start with you first with this one. Not a whole lot of players uh, when you look at it um, on expiring contracts uh, for the Canucks. Who do you think should be their main focuses uh, on resigning, and who could they probably let go in the off season? You know, Besser's year last year caught me by surprise. I, I think that's the high water mark of his career. I, I no one's going to sit back and expect another forty goal season, but I undervalued him when he went through the death of his father. It affected him enormously, and the Canucks had patience with him uh, patience that I probably wouldn't have had myself. And they were rewarded for that patience. I do think that, that he's a trade piece, but if he does what he did last year, maybe you want to keep him around. I, I, I have undervalued Besser. Pia Suter is great. We love him. Fourth, line center can drop into the third line kill penalties he does a lot of good things him and teddy bluger were great pickups and you could probably get him for a decent contract uh hoglander is has the biggest upside of any young player on our team you know uh, it was an impressive year last year with i think 24 goals 20 what do you have a 24 goal campaign 23 years old uh, he i i think that you now he's a restricted free agent, but I think that you want to talk contract with him. If he may, if he's a top six forward in the first 20 games of the year, I, I think you want to lock him in. Uh, Daniel Sprong, you mentioned already. The thing about Sprong is this is a sixth team in the NHL, and you were saying, you know, he's a fourth liner but can score. You want fourth liners with truculence, you, you want hits, you want to change the flow of the game. That's why he's never really fit in anywhere. Now, when your coach is Rick Tockett, you better go into the dirty areas and play some tough hockey, which I expect him to play. Uh, DiGiuseppe was a revelation when he's healthy. I thought he was great. So I, I think that, that what's happening in Vancouver with Rutherford and Alvin, well, Rutherford really in control, is we have depth. We have depth and we can play you in different ways. Uh, for the defenseman, you know, Pullman's going to be MIA probably for us, you know, he's with the concussions he's done of uh, Forbort, uh, I look forward to seeing him out there. You know, he, he's earned everything he got. If you talk to the coaching staff and the, with the Bruins, they just talked about his work ethic nonstop. Every, every time they talk about Forbort, they talk about his, his work ethic uh, with Lincoln. In, you know, I expect Lincoln in to be the number two here to start the year, but you know, he had a nine sixteen save percentage, Two years ago, he did 908 save percent, 11 6 and 0 with a 908 save percentage. So, why did the Predators, Predators who are putting together a Stanley Cup capable type hockey team, not want him as a backup? They paid double the price for Wedgwood. When something like that happens, I trust the brain trust of the Predators very much, who was watching this goalie day in and day out. And if any team in the league could have had him for $850,000, there has to be a reason why that is. So I do not have high expectations for Lankin and, and do believe that it's Seelofs who needs to step up here while we're waiting for Thatcher Demko uh, to become healthy again, which could never happen. I mean, that's the biggest question mark around this hockey team is Thatcher Demko, you know, the Vesna runner up, uh, so, you know, Seelovs looks like the real deal. I mean, he did have an 898 save percentage in the playoffs. I mean, it's not like, but but it was a very, very high pressure situation and he and he played well and he and he gave us some confidence. But you know, Vancouver, other than you know, Luongo and Kirk McLean, uh, was a goalie graveyard. That's where goalies went to die. And and if Lankinen and Seelovs don't get off to a good start, 
the heat is on. The pressure's on. The media's going to be all over them. So it's a concern, and it's nice to have Patera as the third stringer in, in case you need to go to him. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have to go to him at some point. So of that group, Hoglander, Hoglander could go for 35 goals this year. And if he does, I know he's restricted, but you'll probably want to lock him in uh, early. If he's a top six forward, I think Tockett will know within the first 10, 15 games, and so will Rutherford. And one thing about Rutherford, if they let him trade Malkin and Latang, he would still be managing the Penguins, and they would have made the playoffs last year. He was not, he was handcuffed in Pittsburgh. The Canucks are so lucky that he came over to Vancouver. He's done a hell of a job. Easy. Yeah, when the goalies situation, I mean, we'll get to the goalies. There's question marks there, of course, uh, with Demko's health uh, this season. Uh, Lankinen, it, it, I think, obviously, it depends how he plays this year. Uh, will determine a lot. Uh, and then, of course, um, um, Demko's health, uh, long-term health, I think, will determine a lot. Uh, and as you said, if, if the goalies kind of struggle, uh, there could definitely be off-season moves. Uh, so Lankinen could find himself on another team, uh, maybe in the AHL, um, if, if he doesn't perform well with the Canucks. Brock Besser is really interesting. So he had that really good season last year, and he's probably wishing that he would have had it this year uh, because this is his contract year. Uh, so now the pressure is really on for him to try to repeat what he did last year. Uh, because if he does kind of come back down to earth this year, uh, he's losing out on a ton of money. Uh, he's losing out on a ton of money. So I'm really interested to see how Besser does this year, being in a contract year after the season he had last year. Uh, and I think, again, it all depends on how he does this year. Uh, if if he plays like he did last year, uh, then I can see the Canucks re-signing him. Uh, but if, if he does take a step down, I think he's probably going to want to test free agency uh, because the Canucks probably won't give him the amount of money he wants uh, if he does have a down season. Um, Niels Hoglander, like you said, being an RFA, uh, if he does have a 35-goal uh, season, he's going to be uh, getting a, a hefty pay raise. Uh, so we'll see how that works. And then... Uh, the rest of the guys here in this list, um, I think they're replaceable uh, in uh, in free agency. Um, maybe you keep a Pia Suter uh, and um, Forbert cheap one-year deals uh, or maybe cheap two- or three-year deals. Uh, but really, on this list, the big name players, uh, for the most part here, are re-signed for the Canucks uh, long-term. Uh, so there's not a lot of... Uh, urgency here when it comes to upcoming contracts you know they talk about Sidney crosby's 8.7 million as like the bargain of the league there's no better contract than jt miller at 8 million a year in my estimation uh, you know uh look crosby's a generational talent but right now starting this season jt miller is a better hockey player than than sid jt miller is phenomenal and to have him at eight million per till twenty nine thirty, it's too bad that we overpaid Pedersen. Because when you have a superstar player, I mean, he had one hundred three points last year. He's going to go for a hundred again. And to have a superstar player like that at eight million per, uh, really sets you up beautifully as you move forward. And I'm sure when people hear me say that, you know, I think JT Miller this year is better than Crosby this year. There'll be people who don't agree. And and, and I'm not, you know, obviously Crosby's a generational talent, but you know, there's an age advantage with JT Miller, uh, you know, 12 seasons in. Uh, Crosby is, is getting a little long in tooth, and he's spectacular. But that $8 million contract for JT Miller is just a gift. It's It sets you up, and, and I hate that we have given a lot of that back in the Pedersen deal. Also, you have to look at the guys that are going to be around him. Crosby, he's he doesn't have the – everyone else around him is getting old. Uh, I think JT Miller has a much better uh, situation around him. Uh, that's gonna, so I could see him being just as good as Crosby this year. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go and say who's better because uh, 
we haven't seen the guys uh, play yet, but you are right. There's definitely an age advantage uh, there with, with Miller. Uh, and looking at the possible lineup for the Canucks, of course, guys can move around. Nothing is settled in here. Demko um, obviously is not going to be playing opening night, so maybe not necessarily an opening night lineup. But if and when he does come back healthy, uh, he would uh, obviously find himself as a starting goaltender uh, here for the Canucks. Looking at the forward group, um, we just talked about JT Miller. Uh, projected to play with Brock Besser and Danton Heinen. So like you said, uh, the Canucks are high on Danton Heinen. Uh, if they're bringing him here and putting him uh, on the top line, if that's where he does play, uh, he's going to get a real opportunity here uh, playing with Miller and Besser. Uh, Niels Hoglander, Elias Pedersen, and Jake DeBrusque on that second line. Uh, it's going to be really tough for opposing defenses to kind of pick their poison here because if you really do focus on that Miller Besser line uh, and you're leaving that second line um, more unprotected, uh, they're going to make you pay. Uh, Hoglander, Pedersen, and DeBrusque, uh, I think there could be a ton of chemistry there. Uh, and that's not a line I think anyone uh, would want to try to defend. I think there's a lot of uh, offense there. Uh, Dick Gisep. Uh, Bluger and Connor Garland. What could be said about Connor Garland? Uh, I think he really uh, performed well last year uh, at times, and I think uh, kind of took the league by surprise uh, with how well he performed last year. Fourth line, Daniel Sprong is there on the fourth line, <laughs> but like you said, Jimmy, uh, not really the physical guy uh, that maybe won on that fourth line, but Having some offense throughout the lineup, uh, when your fourth line can put up some offense, uh, that really helps the other three lines uh, when you do have some offensive ability on that fourth line. Uh, so the forward group I like here for the Canucks. Uh, defensemen, Quinn Hughes and Philip Hronik, Um, that's a great top pair. Uh, we saw what Hronik did last year. Uh, Quinn Hughes, of course, um, is the generational talent here on this team. Uh, Carson Soucy, Tyler Myers, not a deep pair you want to face. Uh, and like you said, Derek Forber and Rick, uh, Vincent Desjardins, again, not a defensive pair that you want to face. Uh, so forward group I like. The defense is great offensively up there at the top. Uh, and then as well defensively, it's all about the goalies. Uh, what kind of goaltending is this Canucks team going to get? Um, will Silvas or Will Lankinen step up here um, with the absence of Demko? Will Demko return? How will he be when he does return? There's just so much question marks with the goaltending here. But the way the defense is set up, I think the goaltending um, is going to be okay. Uh, I think that there is strong defense in front of the goaltending. Uh, and then you've even got strong defense in the forward group as well. Uh, so there might be some pain, growing pains here and there with the goaltending. But overall, uh, I think the forward group and defensive group is very strong. Uh, it will kind of be able to help out the goaltending uh, when they do have rough nights. Jimmy? Four group defensive goalies. What do you think about the possible lineup here for the Canucks? I really love this hockey team. And remember last year, that's not what I was saying. Uh, Dakota Joshua, you know, was probably, our, you know, Connor Garland, Dakota Joshua. I mean, that was the best story stories uh, on the Canucks. Uh, Joshua diagnosed with testicular cancer this summer. So he went, underwent surgery to remove a tumor. Uh, he's continuing to recover from surgery. Uh, he intends to play this year, uh, but he is not available to start the year. That's who you want on that third line uh, instead of De Giuseppe, who does a great job too. But uh, the Bluger, Garland, Dakota, Joshua line, uh, they outscored the opposition when they were on the ice together, five on five, 21 to 10, and also uh, had 88 high danger scoring chances compared to the opposition getting just 51 when they were on the ice. I mean, it's as good as a third line can play 
So it's too bad not having Dakota Joshua there in that forward group. Then we have two kids that are, you know, maybe they're going to want to have them as, as top six forwards down in Abbotsford. But Atu Ratu uh, is, was the central piece in the Bo Horvat trade. Uh, and he looks very good in camp. And then Jonathan Lekaramaki, he scored seven goals in seven games in the World Juniors this year for Sweden. It was his third time representing Sweden in the World Juniors, and he has had a great camp. So these two kids, they're, they're going to be on this roster at some point this season, and we're very excited about when they do. Uh, look, JT Miller is... You know, if you watch the Canucks every single night, he's just, he's the straw that stirs the drink. He's reliable. He's accountable. He's tough. He wins face-offs. He can play the wing too. There's nothing that JT Miller can't do. And Canucks fans have just fallen in love with him. Again, Pedersen, when, when things get very difficult, he sort of disappears. And I used to call him toddler shoulders. I stopped calling him toddler shoulders when he started succeeding shorthanded, you know, on the penalty kill. But uh, he makes me uncomfortable at times because I watch him just disappear. DeBrusque is a great line mate for him. And, you know, Heinen and DeBrusque played a lot together last year for the Bruins. Uh, they, I believe they played 154 minutes together on the ice. And we could see Heinen drop back and Hoglander move up. I think there's still a jury out as to exactly how the forward group is going to look. But we have depth. We have defensive responsibility, as you talked about. Uh, it's too bad we don't have Dakota Joshua to, you know, to help Sherwood and, and, and DiGiuseppe with the size and the truculence. But, and we have the youth coming up. Like It literally is the best state of affairs the Canucks have ever had. Uh, on defense, Hughes and Hronick are spectacular. I mean, Quinn Hughes is mind-boggling how good he is and his his defensive accountability has gone way way up of course he was a Norris trophy winner i mean two years ago you could talk about the the holes in his defensive game and, and you don't talk about them anymore we talked about the size of that susie myers forbort uh deharnay uh, group they're huge they are now they're not that big but they're extremely tall and tyler myers at six million dollars a year playing 21 22 minutes a game is is one of the worst defensemen in the nhl uh, last year, we finally got out of that six million, so now he's getting paid three million. We also started playing him eighteen and a half minutes a game, and that changed everything. When you take the responsibilities away from Tyler Myers, uh, and you know he becomes a real quality defenseman, and I like that three million dollar signing. And then Thatcher Demko, healthy, this team could win the Stanley Cup. No Thatcher Demko, this team will have to fight to get to the playoffs. Uh, that's that's the difference between having a a, a, a Vesna backup, or sorry, a Vesna runner up uh, as your starting goaltender, or you know, a Lankinen. Now, could Shilov step up in a big way? The young Latvian, you know, he's capable of it. I mean, right now he's played more playoff games than he has regular season games in the NHL. And again, he had an 898 save percentage. He just he just gave us stability. I look at this hockey team and I think, wow, we are a lucky fan base. This team is everything that you need to succeed except the question marks around Demko. I I love the team. I truly, like, this is as high as I've been on a team in a, in a Vancouver Canucks uniform uh, possibly ever. Now, there are some formidable foes in the Western Conference, and you talked about the Oilers in our division, and the Oilers just watched another team win the Stanley Cup, and we saw what happened the first time Gretzky uh, watched the Islanders uh, win a Stanley Cup against them. Well, they came back and they won the Cup. And, and the Oilers are capable of doing that. But you don't need to win the division uh, to win a Cup. You just need to be healthy and playing good hockey at the end of the year if you're that elite. Uh, so I do think that that number is not bad for the Canucks to win the division, but I know that we'll get to that here shortly. So this lineup, I wish Dakota Joshua was uh, there. I mean, the, the one thing you'd say is that four group could use a little bit more size, even though DiGiuseppe, I mean, Sherwood's not that big, but he hits. So you, Dakota Joshua is a missing link there, but this is this is a real quality hockey team. And I didn't like DeBrusque, you know, wanting out of Boston, but his old man, Lou, is a beloved player in the history of NHL, beloved, and he's a great, uh, you know, play-by-play -play man and, you know he's just he's a great guy and and, and 
I, I don't know why Jake was so unhappy, but it's exciting to have him here in Vancouver. It's uh, it's very, very exciting to have him in Vancouver, and he could be that perfect fit for Pedersen. And if anything goes wrong with Besser, I mean, DeBrus could play anywhere in that top six four group. So this is a very, very good-looking roster. I agree. I like it. And, hey, uh, adding Dakota Joshua back, like if he – he said he he does say he wants to play obviously sometime this season. Getting him back towards the playoff, uh, getting him back in a playoff run, uh, is is a great addition. Oof, uh, to the have. Cra- I mean, coming back from testicular cancer, the we're talking, you know, character built. You know, like it's just it's it's the fan base is going to go bananas. The players in the room are going to, you know watch his struggle and watch him go through this. I mean, it's, it's, it is a nice thing to have um, knowing that you have a, a guy like Dakota Joshua who earned that contract uh, coming back at some point this year. So yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a, it might be a big boost when he's ready to go. Yeah. Like for just his impact, but yeah, like you said, in the locker room too, it could be a huge uh, addition there uh, later on. Uh, team future bets. Uh, so, of course, I have the same bets listed for everybody. Uh, no, I don't think the Canucks are going to uh, finish with the least points in the NHL. Uh, but as I said, I put the same bets for everyone uh, on each sheet here. Uh, looking at this um, Win Stanley Cup Conference Presidents Trophy Division, uh, I'm not pulling the trigger on, on any of those. But as I did say uh, at the beginning of the show uh, or earlier on in the show, there is um, there is um, value on the Canucks here to win the division at plus 400. Uh, They're going to be in a tough fight, though. Uh, And with the goaltending question marks, I just can't get to it. Uh, If we knew that Demko was going to be healthy uh, and he was going to play. majority or at least half of the season and he was going to be his normal self i'd be pulling the trigger on the win the division for sure uh, plus 400 uh, but with those question marks uh, it's not a play for me make playoffs minus 320 not much you can do with that uh, i don't play anything past minus 135 so i'm definitely not going to be playing a minus 320 99 and a half points um, the Canucks had 109 last year, uh, and now we see their total going down to 99 and a half. So a, a 10 point drop off. And I, yes, there's goaltending question marks here, but we've already kind of looked at the defense and I, I don't think this Canucks team goes back 10 points. Uh, I think that's, that's kind of a big drop off. Um, then again, uh, it is not easy to get 200 points in the NHL. Um, but I do see this Canucks team being in the top three in the division. Uh, last year, the Canucks 109, Edmonton 104, LA 99. Uh, so everyone was really in that 100-point mark. Uh, if I was going to be pulling the trigger on anything here, it would be uh, Canucks point total over 99.5. Uh, but ultimately... I've not got to anything uh, on this sheet. And I'm not sure why 100 plus points is minus 120, but 99 and a half points is minus 110. So um, <laughs> definitely take the minus 110 with the 99 and a half points and not the 100 plus. That DraftKings made a mistake there. But Jimmy, team future bets for the Canucks. Uh, what do you think about the bets here on this sheet? There's nothing. You're handcuffed with the Canucks right now. And also, even if Demko comes back, what are the odds that he will be healthy come playoff time? If if you are gambling, you want to have the script in front of you. And the script that Demko comes... He's had two different hip surgeries, multiple knee surgeries. Now we're dealing with this, I mean, this injury that we know very little about. The... Um, what is it called? The where is it here? The it's a a messed up. This is the very back of the knee here. The pop popliteus, the popliteus muscle. 
in his knee. So this is a new injury. Uh, you know, I, honestly, from a gambling standpoint, the best, just so you have a script that you can trust, the best thing would be if Thatcher Demko doesn't play a single game this year and you write off his entire contract, you know, to LTIR, uh, long-term injury reserve. And, Cause then remember you in LTIR, you can't come back. You can only come back at the end of the regular season. So that would be the best case scenario. Cause then you have a set idea. You could use the money that you've now saved. You could go out and get a goaltender that you know will be healthy. So at this, with this board, the only thing that would interest me would be the cup at 18 to one. I, I, you know, I think that's a fine risk reward situation, but again, I don't know how you can bet it with the concern in net. I mean, we know what happens when you have a hot goaltender in the playoffs. Uh, you know, we watched the the Sabres make it to the Stanley Cup final, you know, with the dominator in that. We, we've watched uh, goaltenders get extremely hot and will their team through rounds, you know. Uh, with the unknown in the crease, I don't know how you can make any future bets on the Canucks. And it's unfortunate. And when Thatcher Demko, let's say he comes back 30 or 40 games in and looks good for 10 games, again, I don't know how you make a future bet on him staying healthy. So we're just sort of handcuffed here. And, you know, you have to deal with those consequences. I can't take the division either. Uh, you know, I can't. There, there, there's nothing on this board that appeals with the question marks in the crease. And it, it's too bad. But that's where we are. I, I imagine that. Rick Tockett coach teams come into the season uh, in the best shape of their lives. So last year, it surprised everybody how fast out of the gate the Canucks went. Now, maybe it won't surprise people this year, but there are question marks with can Seelovs keep everything in control? Uh, you know, if not, is Lincoln in the guy? Is Patera the guy? Uh, will that lead, if it is Seelovs, will that lead to overs? Do we want to bet overs with the Canucks because they're not going to be getting the, the solid goaltending? We know what the power play is capable of. You know, Last year's power play was extremely disappointing. Uh, the team started to understand how to defend. You had to keep one player up very high on Hughes. And the first half of the year, we had the top five power play. The second half of the year, we were bottom 10 power play. Uh, so, you know, for totals betters, we really want we, the the teams we're playing believe they can stop our power, power play by, by shutting down Quinn Hughes at the top, uh, you know. And so... That's the first thing you're going to want to see. That's the first thing I want to know is, is the Canucks power play clicking? That's going to answer all my questions from a game to game capping standpoint. Because if we have a top five power play in the NHL, our team total overs are going to be cashing. Overs are going to be cashing, especially if Seelovs isn't, you know, is a 900 save percentage goaltender. So uh, with the futures board, unfortunately, Terry, there's nothing that is um, appealing to me with the question marks around Demko. Yeah, and it's it's tough with with future bets for each team. Um, you can't pull the trigger on everything, so uh, that's why I'm ultimately also staying off here. Uh, and hey, Philip Gustafson is available. If, if Vancouver <laughs> wants another goalie, uh, I want Jesper Wallstead to get starts. Uh, Philip Gustafson had that really great year with Minnesota. Took a step back last year, I think. He's somewhere in the middle uh, of what he did last year and that great season with uh, the Wild in his first year. I think he's somewhere in the middle there. Uh, so, hey, if the Canucks need another goalie, uh, Bill Guerin, I'm sure, will wheel and deal. Well, we've seen That's Vegas with four goaltenders, you know, switching through and still playing at a very high level. So it's it's not impossible, but it's uncomfortable. Exactly. <laughs> Now we're going to look at player future bets here uh, for the Canucks, and then I've got an award there uh, there at the bottom. Uh, normally I do have um, coaches to win the Jack Adams, uh, but with the season the Canucks had last year, uh, I, I really don't see talk of being in the question for that because it normally is that team that kind of surprises everyone. Uh, like I think could be Seattle or Utah this year i think those are two teams that uh, you'd want to look at for uh, jack adams bets but brock besser here um 32 and a half goals 62 and a half points uh, he had 40 goals last year uh which was 
more than double what he had the previous season. Usually he's been around the 18 to 26 goal mark uh, through his career. Uh, and then, of course, last year uh, he played in 81 games. Uh, that's the most games he's played in his career. Uh, so healthy season, really good season. Now he's coming in here and he's got to try to do it again. But he is in that contract here. Uh, so you know t- players are motivated in that contract here. I can't get to either of these uh, I because I, I just I don't know. I don't know if he can replicate what he did last year. Was that just a one really good year? Uh, or was that the real Brock Besser? Um, I have questions there. So I can't pull the trigger on that. Uh, Elias Pedersen, 34 and a half goals here, 90 and a half points. He had 34 goals last year, 39 the season before that, 32 the season before that, 68 points in 21 22, 102 points in 22 23, and then 89 points last year. Uh, so Pedersen goals, Pedersen points are both basically the same uh, projected uh, to what he did last year. Uh, he did play in 82 games last year, the previous two seasons before that, 80 games. Uh, so he has uh, been a player that's been able to stay healthy, uh, which is something you look for when betting uh, player future bets. Um, but now that he's got the money, uh, I, I, re- I really don't know. I really don't know about Pedersen. Uh, I think he can hit both, but I could, I could see him being just under uh, both as well. Uh, so no play there for me. Uh, JT Miller, uh, 81 games played last year, 81 the season before that, 80 the season before that, 103 points last year, 82 in 22-23, 99 in 21-22. Uh, and then goals, 37 last year, and then 32 in back-to-back seasons before that. Uh, and his goal total is at 32 and a half here, 90 and a half points. And 90 and a half points is a high total uh, in the NHL, but he's hit in two of his last three years. 22 23 was a down year. Um, he is on that top line. I do lean with his point total over. I, I don't like the kind of questions about who's going to be on his line. Um, it's looking like Brock Besser, or maybe um, it's Stanton Heinen, or maybe it's Hoglander. I think with JT Miller, I think I'd want to wait a few games into the season and kind of see who he's playing with, the chemistry they have, uh, and then maybe uh, look at his point total later on in the season or early in the season at least. DeBrusque, 48 and a half points. He had 40 last year in 80 games played, um, which was a down year. Uh, Because the previous year he had 50 points and only 64 games played. Uh, So a little bit of a drop off. He only had 19 goals last year. The previous two years, 27, 25. Uh, So a little bit of drop off with DeBrusque. But um, I like him to hit his point total here at 48 and a half. I don't really like the minus 125 uh, price here on that. Uh, But I do think DeBrusque, as I said earlier on in the show, uh, I think he really needed that change in scenery. Uh, Now, my issue with DeBrusque is last year he played in 80 games, uh, but previous to that, the highest he had got was 77. Uh, 64, 65, 68, 70. Uh, So he's really had uh, injuries in the past, uh, which is not something I want to see for a player future bet. And finally, we've got Quinn Hughes, 14 and a half goals. Uh, He got 17 last year, uh, which was the most he's had in his career. Previous year, seven, eight, three, eight. Uh, obviously, that three was in the 56 short game season. 92 points last year. Uh, and then the previous year, 76, 68, 41. So he's really gotten better. Uh, Quinn Hughes has really improved um, year to year uh, the last few seasons. Um, can he really improve, though, on what he did last year? Uh, at 17 goals and 92 points. I don't think so. 
But I do think he can match what he did last year. And if he matches what he did last year, he's going to hit both of the goal total and the point total. I would look at the point total with Quinn Hughes uh, versus the goal uh, total. I like the 84 and a half points. Uh, and then the Norris Trophy um, plus 700. Uh, does he win back to back trophies? Uh, I'm not sure, but there's good value there with Quinn Hughes to win the Norris. Jimmy, I'm not on any of these officially. Um, are there any p- future bets here on this list that you like? You know, <clears throat> with Pedersen, he has heard everybody going off in the media about how bad he was in the playoffs. Again, one goal, five assists in 13 games. Uh, how bad he was at the you know last 12 games, 15, 20 games of the regular season. And he always starts fast. Now he's got DeBrusque playing with him. I, I expect him to start fast. You know, it'd be more like uh, a live under, you know, once he's gotten off to a great start. Uh, I don't want his 90 and a half points. And again, I fear that contract immensely. Uh, with Besser's 32 and a half goals, 62 and a half points, I- I've undervalued him now. And, and so uh, I don't want to be late to the Besser party. Because you could be late to the party and early to the funeral and, and things like that, so I, I, I'm not going to. Wouldn't want that. But but uh, J T Miller is just a monster. The problem with 90 and a half points. Problem with these things is just that you know one injury. You know if he misses 10 games, <clears throat> he won't get to 90 and a half. <clears throat> I know that he wants back to back hundred point seasons. So I have interest in JT Miller at 90 and a half points. And I have interest in DeBrusque. I picked DeBrusque very late in the hockey pool last year, uh, thinking it was a great pick. And he went stretches, especially in the second half, where he just wasn't scoring. And I, I can't understand it fully. Uh, I think he's got you know a great contract. I believe it's a good contract at, at, at that price point. And I expect him to be a menace on the power play with this incredible group. Uh, so that over 48 and a half is, is appealing. Miller over 90 and a half and, and DeBrusco over 48 and a half. With Hughes, he wants 100 points. He can get 100 points. So again, though the over in that regard, I would be interested in. I guess, I guess when it comes down to it, the under in Pedersen 90 and a half points, I would, I would be interested in. The problem w- with me with player prop, season-long player props, my ROI is extremely high on unders and it's low on overs and when you track yourself this deep in the game you know i'm turning 45 and been doing this for a long time i stop betting overs in, in player props i only bet unders for instance i'm on travis kelsey under 850 and a half receiving yards this year you know and i max bet that i, I i've had a good ability to say oh this guy is not this guy is done rather than saying this guy's going to be healthy all year and have a career season uh, it's 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 not that that you you know if he gets hurt it's not like you were wrong but you lose the bet and when it comes down to it it's all about succeeding financially at handicapping sports and score casting and, and so again uh, no, none nothing really appeals to me other than the Pedersen under but I would find that more appealing after he gets off to a great start. Uh, you know, if, if do you want to have, and this is the question that we always ask people, you know, in the future is, do you want to have 300 to 400 to $500 held up for six months, seven months, eight months? And, 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 and I don't mind it. You know, this is an investment that we're doing. We're, we're sports investors, you know, uh, but, you know, at a minus 115 at a minus 125, I mean, I did it for Kelsey. But even that, that's just 500 bucks that you have held up, you know. So do you want to do that here? And my answer is is no. Uh, as much as I think Miller will go over 90 and a half, Hughes will go over 84 and a half, DeBrusco will go over 48 and a half. I, I don't see if it's worth. I mean, if, if JT Miller gets hurt, let's say he plays 68 games this year, because he's going to his 13th season in the NHL. He go- plays 68 games. He scores 87 points. You know, uh, that's a really good season, but you'll lose your bet. So, uh, you know, if, if it was a free roll, I'd be on Miller over 90 and a half, DeBrusco over 48 and a half, and Hughes over 84 and a half. And 
with Pedersen is this, we're going to learn a lot about his character this year. Is this contract going to be hanging over his head that, that maybe he's not deserving of it. And maybe the, the critics come out and say he's not doing enough for that money. I mean, imagine getting $3.6 million more than JT Miller. I mean, you better play some damn good hockey and the Canucks and the media in Vancouver is tough. So I, I wonder what Pedersen's going to do. I expect Pedersen to do what he does every year and get off to a really strong start and then slowly kind of get battered down when there's less and less space out on the ice. But the Miller, DeBrusque, and Hughes point totals over. I wouldn't take Hughes to win the Norris. I know that Kale McCarr is um, non-plussed that Hughes won the Norris, and, and he's a very competitive defenseman. I think Kale McCarr will try to get it back this year. But uh, what a hell of a hockey player Quinn Hughes is and the whole Hughes family. Uh, what a spectacular uh, three brothers in, in the NHL. So, yeah, those would be overs. But, I again, the risk-reward. That's what you have to ask yourself. And, you, and then you also have to ask yourself, am I okay losing this bet? Did I, did I script it right and then am I okay losing this bet? And if Miller over 99 points and he ends up with 87 in 70 games, I, no, I won't be. I'll be upset. I'd be upset. I'm not okay losing that bet. I'm not okay having that money held up for the year. So now for our hockey pools, you know, Hughes is a monster. Miller's a monster. And I'm very interested in DeBrusque. The problem is my hockey pool is a bunch of Vancouver guys and they overvalue the Canucks. So, yeah, you got to let them all go. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and I did take a look here while you were breaking that down. Uh, JT Miller's plus 300 to get 100, 100 or more points. So that, if you really do think he's going to get there, you can get a much better price of plus 300. That's much more appealing. I, I agree. Because, you know, you, then you get the risk reward. You know, you, you, you bet a little over 300, right? If you bet a little over 300, you bring back 1,000. You know, now we're talking. So that that is yeah, much more appealing. Uh, and that's it. That is the Canuck season preview show. Um, Jimmy, anything else you want to say before we finish the show? You know, uh, just thank God. Thank God we have found ourselves in the Rutherford era uh, with Rick Tockett behind the bench. You know, it's a, it's a really nice situation that the Canucks fans are in. And uh, we deserve it. You know, we won 50 games last year for the third time in franchise history. And we came in with the Sabres and got the short end of the stick right away when they got Gilbert Perot and we got Dale Talon. Look, my voice broke saying Dale Talon. Well, he's a good hockey man, and and uh, I, I really have nothing. Hey, now, take a look at what the Wild got in their expansion draft. That's true. I don't even remember any of the West Waltz. <laughs> <laughs> Darby Hendrickson. Those are the highlights uh, of the Wilds uh, draft. So no, I I, I hear you. Um, I hear you. Uh, you know, it's 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 been a tough go though as a Canucks fan, and, and I look at this hockey team and think, good God, if Demko was good to go and had trained all off season, I'd be sitting here with the Canucks to win the cup, just in my pocket. Not 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 you know. But I would want them at 18 to 1. I would think that's a nice price. It's 14 to 1 to bet 365. And, and I think that you'll find a better number for that during the year. I think the best case scenario almost now, I, I, I do think that the Oilers are destined right now to, to, to you know, win it all. But, uh, you know, if, if Demko was, can't go this year and our numbers drop to 35 to 1. Then I, I think I would get involved. I think I would get involved because I, I think that this team has intangibles. And I've always dreamt of having a top defensive pair that's elite in Quinn Hughes and Philip Hronick. And then a bunch of guys who are six foot four and, and, and taller and all, you know, 220, 230. That's what I've always dreamt of. So I love what, what Jim's doing. And, and, and I believe in this hockey team. And Terry, thank you so much for having me. I, I love doing these Canucks breakdowns. Uh, love the team. So thank you so much for having me, my man. Thanks. Uh, it was a great show, Jimmy. Everyone go give Jimmy a follow. Uh, his Twitter link is in the thank description you. of this video. And um, let's see how the Canucks do this year. I think it's going to be another good season. Obviously, the goalie question marks, but you can go, if, if the Canucks need to, uh, you can go and find another goaltender. Um, there are 
a lot of goalies in this league. Um, you can make a trade. And even for someone that's maybe not as known, like Phil, like when Bill Guerin went and did the Talbot for a Philip Gustafson trade, everyone was saying, what the hell are you doing? Uh, trading away Cam Talbot for Philip Gustafson, and Gustafson had that great season. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities if the Canucks, if they're, if goaltending is their weakness, there will be options out there uh, for them to make a trade. Uh, but thank you for uh, everyone for watching, and we will see you guys on the next show. Thanks, guys.